In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to generate the surface for our project that we're been, we are going to be working on, which is called the Concord Commons Project, and it comes from our electronic textbook. Uh, we're going to work through the tutorials. So the first thing we need to do is download the files. I've put the files that we're going to need up on Isidore. So if you go to the class website under Resources, under the folder Civil 3D, there's a Concord Commons zip file. So I'm going to right click on it, save the link as, and I want to make sure that I'm going to put this in the C drive under Civil 3D Projects. So I'll save the zip file to that location. It's not terribly big, so you can right click, show in folder, and then the first thing I need to do is extract all these. So I'll extract it, it'll create a actual folder, not a zip file. Um, and we've got two of these, so I'm going to just cut this using control C, bring it back here and, and replace it that way I don't have two of those files. So here's a reference to that link where these files came from. Uh, we have a text file and a drawing file and, and we'll talk about what we're going to do with those in just a minute. So I'm going to go to Civil 3D here. I just have a new drawing open. The first thing I want to do is do a save as, so I'm just going to type in save as navigate to the C drive under Civil 3D Projects, Concord Commons, and let's call this Concord Commons Step 01 and hit save. Uh, we need to change our coordinate system for the uh, project that we're working in, so uh, we want to switch from in the tool space here from the Prospector tab to the Settings tab. If this isn't showing up, you can go to the Home tab and make sure that that tool space is highlighted here. Go to settings, right click on our file name, edit drawing settings, and here instead of the zone, the coordinate system zone, no datum, we're gonna put in a particular code, and the code is Pennsylvania 83-SF. And we'll hit okay. That just makes sure that all of our coordinates are now referenced to that particular coordinate zone. Uh, the next thing we need to do is go to points and actually pull in the text file of points that we're going to be working with. So under points, we can go to the point creation tool. Uh, this brings up this menu here and the far right says import points. So we'll click on that. We're going to add the click on the plus button to add a file. And what we need to do is under Civil 3D Projects, Concord Commons, what we want to do is click on this text file here. We'll hit open. We need to define the actual file format. And for this project, the file format is point description, northing, easting, elevation, and description. We want to add these to a point group. So let's add these to a group that is called 0405 Concord Commons. And hit OK and hit OK as well. And this will import all those points and create a point group and place them into that point group. OK. Now that the command has finished, we can close out of the Create Points dialog and we can go over to the Prospector tab over here and look at our point groups. And we're going to do a little bit of work here. Um, first we may want to actually look at the points, so we can right click on our point group and zoom to, and this should take us to where all of our points are located. So here you can see our points. Uh, we're going to create another two point groups. So we'll right click on point groups, go to new. This one's going to be called no underscore display. And this will allow us to toggle on and off the display of our points. So the point style, we're going to set to none. The point label style, we're going to set to none. Under the includes tab, we want to include all points. And then on the Overrides tab, we want to override the style and point label for any of the other styles and endpoint groups. So we'll hit OK. You can see they all went away. If we right-click and go to Properties, 
there is an ordered list here. So if we move that node display group down and hit apply, all the point groups will come back up because the first one on the list is going to be the controlling feature here. And we may need to regen our drawing. So if you type in regen at the command line, it'll regenerate your image. And there are all our points again. We're going to create another point group. So point group new. And this one is going to be called existing grade. So eg underscore topo. The style is basic. We can leave the point label style at point elevation description. And what we want to do is we want to include any elevations matching greater than zero. So this will take care of some of the problems we have with points that import and aren't um, at a particular elevation or an elevation of zero. We could look at a point list here. And if you sort by point elevation, you can see now that the lowest point is about 620 feet, the highest being 888 feet. So that looks right. We'll hit OK. And now what I want to do is create a surface. So I'll right click on surfaces, create surface. Let's call this EG for existing grade. Um, we can leave all this alone. We'll hit OK. Now under the prospector tab here, under the EG surface, we want to use the definition. And we're going to define our surface using a point group. So we'll right click on point groups and add the EG topo group. brings up some messages here. Um, we can ignore those. So we'll just close out of that. And here you can see our surface. Uh, one of the problems with the surface is that it is trying to triangulate from all of these points to the nearest point. Um, what we could do is under the surface, go to surface properties, and under the information surface style, we could use contours and triangles and take a look at this. And you can see some of these triangles are pretty faceted here. Uh, we're trying to tie in points from all the way over here up to here. And that's not ideal because uh, the, the majority of our densely populated data is over in this direction. So what we want to do is eliminate some of those longer triangles. And the way to do that is by clicking on our surface, go to surface properties. We'll change this back to uh, two and 10 foot background contours. But under definition build, what we want to do is under the uh, maximum triangle length, we're going to change that to yes. And we'll start by using, uh, let's go 200 feet. And if we hit apply, we can rebuild the surface. We'll dismiss this log here. And you can see that it has cleaned up quite a bit of our, our surface area here. Um, there's still a bit of stuff going on that, that may not be quite accurate. Um, and we could further refine this if necessary. Uh, so at this point, we've got a surface and we've set the max triangle length and what we have now are contours here. Uh, I'm going to change my point group around. So I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to set my node display group at the very top just so I don't have to look at all of those points and I can work um, on my surface here. So here we can see our surfaces. These are our contours at um, 2 and 10 foot intervals I think. And it might be nice to actually add labels to some of these. And uh, we can do that by clicking on them. And then under the Add Labels tab here, we can add uh, 
contours. We can add multiple contours here. And what we really do is we just end up drawing a line that intersects the contours and it'll place contour labels for us. And so we can see the contours here are at 740 and this is the recess or valley and it comes all the way up here to you know 786 up to 800 up here. Um, so we can see the hill is sloping down this way. We could come over here and do the same thing if we wanted to look at these contours uh, over in this direction as well. This line here, you may not like it. Uh, it actually belongs to the C topo text layer, and we could turn that particular layer off if we didn't want to look at that line. And that gives us uh, a more appealing look at our contours here. So this is the surface. Uh, let's go ahead and save this now. So we've already named the file as Concord Common Step 1 Drawing, and we'll hit Save. And that concludes our surface generation.